Hey guys, it's uh, Rico Rocks 2001 back again with another YouTube video. Now, today I'm going to be reviewing the miniature Super Nintendo Model 2. I will review the older, bigger Super Nintendo, which I actually have right here, to in um, another video. So, if you want to see that video, please click the description or in the annotation. So, yeah. Anyway, um, this was released in 1997. There were... Uh, there were different bundles. The most common bundle that most people would know is the one that came with uh, Yoshi's Island. So yeah, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. There were bundles that came with the system by itself. There were ones that came with uh, Legend of Zelda and Link to the Past. And Kirby Superstar Ultra, if I remember the name correctly. I'll put it in the annotation if I'm wrong. So yeah, that those two... the Legend of Zelda and the Kirby game are Target exclusive. So yeah. Right here you have your power switch. Um, you can, This does not have a power light just like the regular Super Nintendo. So yeah. But it's not a huge loss to me. You have your reset button which I like about this more than the regular Super Nintendo. This is a push button which um, not huge font but the push button. Here you have your Super Nintendo logo. I kind of wish they had it in ink, just like the Super Famicom Jr., but they did this for cost reduction, so what do you expect? Um, you have your cartridge slot, which I'm going to stick a game like Super Mario World. And it sticks in here perfectly fine. Now, it does not have an eject button. I'm not sure if you can mod this thing to have an eject button, but that would be destroying the plastic, and you don't want to destroy systems like these. These are collector's items. Here you have the Nintendo logo engraved at the top. Right here you have your two controller ports at the front. Now these have slightly different darker colored, but that's because these are soldered to the motherboard instead of connected to a ribbon cable like the regular Super Nintendo, the big old one. And on the sides, you don't really have anything. At the back you have your AC adapter and your AV multi-out. There's no RF thing, but you can. But if you want to use RF, you can plug in the N64 RF adapter thing. That will work. I've tested it before, and it worked fine. It will not work with S video. Out of the box, no S video. But you can mod this thing to have S video. But I'm not going to mod the thing because that would be hard as heck, and nearly impossible to do. So I'm going to leave it at composite. And besides, my TV does not have S video. And those are the only vi composite jacks there. No S-Video. On the back, it's just the TV end, so yeah. Anyway, if any of you don't know what the Super Nintendo AC adapter looks like, it looks something like this, which has this weird plug, has a little pin thing up there, and you plug it into the Super Nintendo console. Yeah, you might want to be careful because those plastic things break easily sometimes. And this is your big old AC adapter. A lot of people hate these big chunks going to the power supply. Because if you have like, um, now this mostly affects on Sega consoles when you have the CD and 32X. You can't, you can only plug in two of the three. I kind of wish they designed it like the, this has a regular plug. I have to agree with the angry video game nerd. They should have had regular plugs not these kind of plugs these kind of get in the way to be honest but Europe did the right thing having the plug um, having a regular plug at the end even Australia did the right thing and some parts of the UK so yeah and here's your composite cables um, here you have your composite this is gray on the GameCube this would be black and here's your regular TV out Notice this will not work with S-Video, so, yeah. But it will work with the RF adapter if you choose to use RF. I use channel 3 always, so, yeah. Anyway, now, if, now let's take a look at the bottom. This is the model number 101. There's your ABS thing. Now, if this was the Super Famicom Jr., this serial sticker would be down here. Unfortunately, a lot of Europeans were like, does this console ever get released to the U.K.? In Australia, sorry guys, you did not get this design. I checked online, and you got SOL. Screwed out luck. Sorry guys. So you're just going to have to import. 
anyway, here you, here are your controller ports, which I'm gonna grab my Super Nintendo controller. This now I bought these two separate, but it's basically the controller that usually comes bundled with the console. So yeah, you would plug into the controller port like this. Now, this is kind of tricky because they're flipped the other way around, which I don't like about the Super Nintendo. Well, that's how they designed the stinking console. So yeah, you have your X, Y, X, A, and B. Now, this is the American model slash Canadian. You have these lavender and purple. In Europe, Australia, and Japan, they have these colors that are all convexed, which, um... People hate it. I don't know why, but I kind of find lavender and purple to be, I don't know, decent to me. Color doesn't matter. It's just stinking buttons, to be honest. And um, I don't know why I like lavender and purple. It's just memories. If they designed the console red, blue, yellow, and green in America, well, the controller like that, we would have liked the colors but keep the concave buttons if they that would be nice um anyway shoulder buttons first console to have that you have your select and start button from the nes and the d-pad i much prefer the nintendo 64 d-pad but this is not bad this is way better than the nintendo entertainment system d-pad that one if you know that rectangular controller that always digs into your palms and that would give you blisters and stuff and that wouldn't be good anyway that's my review of the super nintendo mini console but i gotta warn you now before i get to that here's a compare to the regular american super nintendo it's um it has your regular power light and eject button for example let's put super mario world and eject button i actually find the eject button on the American model ridiculous. Oh, another thing. On the old, this is a 1991 Super Nintendo. It has the tab thing here, so it locks the cartridge, and you can't eject it. So, yeah. Anyway, if you're gonna plan to buy a Model 2 Super Nintendo, I suggest you buy a used one, not a new one in the box, because most of the chances you might get ripped off and get a phony, a fake one. And that would be catastrophic because you would have uh, some different kind of purple buttons. Um, the it would just be different, and the phone number would be uh, a different shade, and you would have Phillips screws instead of uh, all these game bit screws, and it would just not be the same kind of Nintendo feel. And besides. If anyone has gotten into a fake SNES console, review it on YouTube. I would like to see that. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm Rico Rocks 2001, and I'm signing off. Have a nice day.